In this video, we are going to learn about HStack and VStack in SwiftUI. So to learn about HStack and VStack, we will uh, design this screen that you're currently seeing. So it's a very simple screen. Like you have this sign in button and sign up button at the bottom. And you have this Radio City logo uh, on the top and the title of the app, the name of the app that's Radio City. If you see uh, this screen, uh, you will realize this screen is nothing but a vertical layout. From the top to the bottom, uh, the things that are laid out on the screen are this logo, that's Radio City logo and Radio City name and then the sign in button and sign up button. So in Swift UI, if you want to represent this stream, it's nothing but a V stack with these elements inside the V stack, vertical stack. So generally speaking, like when you uh, use a button, Apple gives you a default button UI and doesn't, that does not really look beautiful. And as you can see, the sign in button is, is looking quite beautiful. And to design this, we will use a text view and a blue background here. Okay, so let's see how we can design this. So let me create a new project. Let's, let's use multi-platform and we will name our app Radio City as we saw in the title. Okay, let me maximize the window. So by default, you get this uh, hello world text view. Let me change it to iOS. The target is set to Mac. We will choose iPhone 12. And you can see like we have this uh, hello world text view that is inside this body. So this is what's going to be shown on the screen. So on the right side, you see a preview of your uh, content view that is the Swift UI view. And that preview is enabled by this uh, preview provider. And you pass your content view that you want to preview. Let's resume it. As you can see, uh, we just have this text view and padding outside it. Now, what we want to do is we want to uh, make something like this. And for this, uh, we want to have a VStack because all these uh, things are layout vertically on the screen. So we we'll delete everything from the body, we'll start from an empty body, and we will create a VStack that is the vertical stack to lay out things vertically. And then you do curly brackets to take the UI elements that are laid out uh, vertically. So the first one here is an image. Uh, so we will say image, uh, star, and parentheses. And inside the parentheses, we can write uh, the name of our image. So currently, we don't have any image. So let's see. Let's let's use some system image. We can use system image, and we can use a star, for example. So you, you have to use the, as you can see, like we have a star on the screen uh, in the middle. Uh, but what we want is we want to show our image. So to show our image, we have to import it first. So you you go to your asset folder here, and you uh, you drop. So I've dropped my image. Let's click and rename this image to just a radio city logo. And once you have this radio city logo in your assets folder, that is nothing but an image that I dropped uh, in here. And we just, now we don't need the system name. We will provide our own image. And that is called radio city logo. Now we got our image in the middle of the screen. So this V tag, if you have just one element, that's going to reside in the middle of the screen by default. Now, uh, next thing that we have in the vertical layout is this text label called Radio City. So we, we will have a text. And the string that this text is showing is Radio City. But you can also see this Radio City text is bold. But what we have currently is a normal text. It's not bold. So to make this text bold, we do enter and we say dot bold. So once we do that, you can see our text is our text is now bold. So bold is an attribute of text. And whenever you want to apply any attribute to a text to a Swift UI view, that is this text view is the Swift UI view. So to apply an attribute to this Swift UI view, you say dot and then uh, the attribute. So here we are saying that dot bold. And this is nothing but an application of this bold function to this view. So that the resulting view is a bold text radio city. Next thing we have on the screen is this um, sign in and sign up. But as you can see, we have this gap. Uh, in between the Radio City text here and the sign button here. So this space uh, is represented by spacer in Swift UI. If you see at the top of the screen, this also is a gap uh, between the top of the form and this first Radio City logo. So we have a spacer here, a spacer here, and spacer here. So let's do that. Uh, so above the image, we have a spacer. Okay, so now uh, we have everything at the bottom because if this is a spacer, it will fill all the screen that is left by this uh, image and label. So we have this view here right at the bottom, and then we have spacer that's expanding to all to the rest of the screen. And we also have a spacer after the Radio City text. So we will say spacer here. Now uh, we have one spacer here at the top and one spacer at the bottom. And we have these two elements in the middle. Now what we want is we want a sign in text, sign in button uh, to be after the spacer. Uh, so we will uh, say text, sign in. 
And as you can see, we have this nice uh, rounded rectangle background behind the sign-in. So to make that, what we will do is uh, we can we can again like if you see this portion right, uh, we can assume this to be one view composed of this text, and there is a spacer here, there is a spacer here, and we have a blue background. So we can assume this is a edge stack. So similar to each stack, we have edge stack that is horizontal stack. So to represent things that are laid out horizontally, and we have noticed that we have three things here that are laid out horizontally. We have a spacer here, we have a text here, and we have again a spacer here. So similar to this vertical uh, layout view where we had spacer here, image here, text here, spacer here, and button, button, and spacer. This also becomes a horizontal stack because we have spacer, text, and a spacer. So what we want is uh, we want to put this text inside an edge stack. Uh, so to do that, what you can do is just a command click on it, and we can say embed in edge stack. So similar to our V stack, we have now H stack and it's curly brackets, and we have one text view inside the H stack. But before that, we have spacer, and after that, we have a space. We have a spacer. So let's put it. Let's have the spacers before and after the text view. Now you can see uh, this sign-in button extends to the borders of the screen horizontally. So this is horizontal layout where this is a spacer, text, and spacer. Now, what we want to do is we want to have a blue background to this whole horizontal uh, stack. So, to add a proper attribute uh, to this whole edge stack, we can again do an enter and then start typing dot background. Again, this is just a function application on this view, this edge stack. So, as a background, we will have a color. You can say color dot blue. So, as you can see, we now we have a blue color. We have the blue color as our background. So you can see in the preview, uh, we get a nice blue background uh, behind sign-in. But you can see like sign in, the, in our design, sign-in is of white color. So to change the color of this text, we have to apply our attribute to this text. So do I enter here and start writing dot foreground color, because this is not a background color. This is going to be the foreground color of the text. And then say dot white. So what we are saying is the foreground color of the text, that is just the text color, is going to be white. And also in the design, uh, this sign-in is bold. So to make this text bold, uh, we will enter and say dot bold. And also you can see the the padding, the height of this background is more than what we have currently. So what we can do is we can create a padding around the signing text. Let's make that happen. This edge stack that we have here, uh, we will we will have some padding around this. So by default, Apple has ten as the padding size. So so if you want to mention the padding uh, size in here, you can say ten. So I think 15 is the default padding, yeah. And 20, you can do more or less as you like, but I think 15 looks good. So we can have the default padding. And if you see here, uh, we have the background color blue after the padding. So what it's saying essentially is, take the edge stack and apply the padding so it is wider, and then uh, apply the background of blue color. So if we do it in reverse, so let's apply the background first and then do the padding afterwards. We see that like our background is very thin. That's because the background is applied to the original edge stack that is not white. And after we have applied this uh, blue background color, we are um, creating a padding around it. So you can see here in this area, the padding is getting created outside of this background. So we don't want that. So this padding has to be applied first. And then after that, when the edge stack is wider, we can apply the background to get this look. Now in the design, you can see we have some padding uh, from left and the right side. Uh, so what we can do is after this background, we can have another padding, but what we don't want is uh, this vertical padding. You can see like we have padding on all four corners, left, right, up, and down, but we only want padding le left and the right. So for that, we can say dot horizontal inside this padding function. Now we only have padding on the left and the right side. And as you can see uh, from this design, this padding is not enough. So default padding of 15 points is not enough. So we need more padding. So let's say 60. Yeah, this looks good and matching the design. So we'll use 60 horizontal paddings. And now we need these rounded corners. And then we have sharp corners, we want to make them rounded. To do that, what we need is something called clip shape. So you say dot clip shape. And in the clip shape, by default, it's circle, you can have a rounded rectangle. And when you open the parentheses in the rounded rectangle, you get these options where you can provide a corner radius. And by default, corner, corner radius is 25, uh, but what we want 
the corner radius to be is maybe that's it 10. But you see nothing happens like you still have uh, sharp corners and we, don't, we didn't get rounded corners. So why is that? Because you have applied this clip shape after this horizontal padding. And you know left and the right side that horizontal padding of 60 is applied. And we have because we have applied this clip shape after the padding, actually the padding corners have been made rounded, but not the background. Background stops here, as you can see. This background of blue stops here before the padding. What we want is we want to apply the clip shape to the background of blue that is just uh, in in the middle. So we'll take this clip shape and apply it after the background. Now you can see we got our radius of 10. I think we can do more. 15. Yeah, this looks nice. Now we, we, we need another button that is similar to sign in, but now it says sign up and it has a different color. So we, so to make another button, what we will do is uh, we'll copy this button that we just made, sign in, and paste it beneath the sign in button. So we got two sign in button that is in the vertical stack, as you can see, they are laid out vertically. And this guy, we, we can change this to sign up. And instead of blue, we will use green color. In the design, you can see we have a spacer here, vertically. So on this vertical stack, we can have a spacer at the bottom, match the design. Now, as you can see, we have very similar looking design that was given to us, but we still see some discrepancies. Uh, in the design, we have some spacing uh, just after the logo, and we have slightly more spacing between these buttons. So, so to create this spacing, uh, what we need to do is, uh, in our vertical stack, uh, we can define a default spacing between our items that are laid out vertically. So to do that, uh, go, go to your B stack and open the parentheses, and you have three parameters in here, alignment, spacing, and content. We will use spacing and give it a value of, let's say, 10. Okay, so let's, let's, let's have a value of 20. So as you can see uh, on the right side, now Radio City logo and the text has a space in between, that is 20 points. And similarly, these two buttons that you see here have a spacing in between, and that, that is 20 points. So this default spacing for the whole vertical stack means that every two elements that are laid out vertically here will have a spacing between them that would be 20 points by default. So if you want to match the design, you can see like sign in and sign up button doesn't have that much gap, but you can see the app logo and then app name has a significant gap. So to do that, like let's remove our default spacing uh, of 20 points. And we can have a spacing after our logo. So uh, after the logo, we will have a default padding. Now, as you can see, we are matching up with the design. So this is how you create a vertical layout and, uh, and add every element that you see on the screen one by one, including the spacings that you see vertically. And you also uh, learn how to create the edge stack, horizontal stack to lay things out horizontally, including the spacing. You also learn about uh, creating paddings and applying a background of some color and making the uh, shape of the rectangle as rounded rectangle using clip shape. And one more point uh, I want to bring here is like you can ch even change the default colors. So here we have default blue color uh, that we are applying to this button. And here we have default system green color uh, for sign up. But we can use our own colors as well. So let's see how we can do that. So go to your assets folder and click on this add plus button and choose color set. And we can create a color. We can say a custom blue color and we can create a custom custom green color. So in the blue color, uh, choose any appearance. So any appearance is used for the light uh, theme and dark appearance is used for the dark theme. Uh, so when we are in the light mode, uh, so let's uh, choose our blue color. And we can choose a blue color with this wheel, or we can uh, choose a color on the screen with this color picker. So let's choose a blue color that we like. And we can use uh, a, a different color in the dark mode, but we don't want that. So, so keep just one color, uh, go to appearance, and choose none. So this will be the only color that will be used in light mode as well as the dark mode. So let's choose our custom green color as well. Again, in the appearance, you can choose none to keep just one color for light mode as well as the dark mode. And let's choose our custom green. This looks good. And let's go to our code again. And instead of the default blue color, we will use our custom blue. So to do that, remove this blue and the dot, and then open parentheses and close parentheses. And in the in inverted commas, we can write our name of the color, custom blue. The next code has paused our uh, preview, so we'll resume it. 
as you can see, we've got our new blue color applied to the sign button. And similarly, uh, we will use our custom green instead of system green. We'll open parentheses, close parentheses, and provide the name of our color, that is custom green. And you see uh, our green color also shows up in the preview. But I think this green color is like over saturated. So let's go back and choose a different green color. Open the toolbox and let's make it a little dark. And when you come back to the screen, you have to resume the preview. And we got our uh, custom green color as well. I think uh, the system green color looks better. So I'll keep this system green. So this is how you create a view in the Swift UI using vertical layout and horizontal layout. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you liked it, hit the like button. And if you have any questions, comment down below. I'll respond to every comment. And if you're new here, do subscribe to see more contents like this. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.